All right, so here's an introduction, kind of a simple introduction to complex numbers. So really, we've been dealing with numbers uh, involved in the real number system, meaning I can actually put it on a Cartesian plane with an x and y axis, meaning like if I get x equals negative 3, I could put that point on the graph, or if x equals 7, I could put that point on the graph. But now when we're dealing with this quadratic, so equations um, with the, the highest x, the variable we need to solve is squared, there is a unique situation that arises, and we'll go ahead and talk about that situation right here. So uh, if we solve for x in this equation, um, you might look at it and say, oh, we can do the difference of squares, but take a notice that it's a plus sign, not a minus sign. If it was x squared minus 16, that we, we could simply put x plus 4 or x minus 4. But because it's a plus sign, I can't do that. So let's get x by itself. Let's subtract 16 from both sides. And I'm going to get x squared equals negative 16. Now, looking here, we've already kind of talked about this, but let's go ahead and look at it in this context. Whenever I square a number, so if, let's say I square a negative number, negative 4 squared. And that means negative 4 times negative 4. Well, a negative times a negative equals a positive. And that's why square roots usually work, because no matter what I, no matter what number is squared, it's always a positive number. But take a look at this situation. Can anything squared equal a negative number? No, it cannot. So if I were to take the square root of both sides, I get x on the left, but I can never take the square root of a negative number. We talked about that. But we go, we're going to go ahead and introduce you to this idea of imaginary numbers, meaning we know that we can't graph this in a usual graph, but we're going to go ahead and continue with the problem understanding that this is an imaginary or a complex scenario. So it's actually quite simple. What you do, see the negative inside? We're going to move it to the outside of the square root. So x equals plus or minus i. So Remember, we take the square root of a number, we always put plus or minus, and in order to signify that this is going to be an imaginary number, or an imaginary scenario, we're going to move i to the outside, and I'm still left with the square root of 16. Now I can take the square root of 16, which is 4, and I always write the number before a letter, so it's going to be x equals plus or minus 4i. Again, it's different because we realize that this solution is in the imaginary axis, or in the imaginary realm. And in the next example, I will show you how we uh, graph such problems and what the graphs look like. But whenever you see a negative in the square root, essentially move it to the outside and put an I there to show that this is an imaginary solution.